Hello and welcome to today's video. If you're having a difficult time in recruiting new talent to your local service business, then this video is for you. Go ahead and watch it. I'll see you there. Bye. I'm going to get straight to it because I know you're probably busy. So talent acquisition, it's essentially the same as a sales fund. So if you want to recruit a lot of good talent, you're essentially looking at it as the perspective of sales as well. So if you know a sales funnel, well, then you also know a talent acquisition funnel. The only difference is it's, it's way more educational. Okay. So first of all, got to find out how to find talent. There are multiple uh, places for finding talent. Here are some of my favorite places that we use at Keelan.io. So first of all, uh, you can advertise. We use Facebook a lot, put up an ad, collect a bunch of leads, put them through the educational phase, and then we speak, them, uh, speak with them afterwards. The good thing about this is that it allows us to have a insane amount of volume of people applying. Um, however, they are not always as um what can you say as specialized as if you were looking at a job board for instance right what you could also do is online job boards you know indeed linkedin things like that uh, speak to your competitors where are they finding them it depends a lot on what kind of service that you're providing and what your uh, for instance if you're having technicians if they need any certification all that good stuff okay the best way to do this is definitely through an employee referral program so if you already have staff in your company and you have uh, maybe one or two of them where you, you know, this is, this is an A player, right? You've got to speak with them, see if they know anybody else that they can recommend, and then you get them into the business. But in either case, you want to be um, basically interviewing a lot of them in order to find out who is really good at this. So I recommend running recruitment like you would with sales. Unless you're looking for a specific set of skills that are super rare, you will nine out of 10 times get the most volume and quality from a sales like recruitment funnel. Like I said before, where you basically push people through a funnel, you educate them and then you speak with them. Right. And so the process is like this. First, you find them, you find you find a place, you find a pool of potential candidates. So that is job boards, it's advertising, it's referrals, it, it's wherever there are people that can potentially fulfill what it is that you're looking for. Then you engage with them. Right. So you want to have that information and you want them to uh, basically be interested in knowing more about the opportunity. So this is very superficial. What the, what what are you offering them and what do they get out of it? Essentially. Right. That sends them to the next stage, which is education. Right. After that, you convert them and then, of course, you retain them because you don't want to have talent coming in that you have been training and spending resources on. And then all of a sudden they just disappear off to a competitor. And so you want to, this is one where a lot of companies, they fail. It's on the retention part of it. So how do you engage talent? One thing is finding potential recruits. Another one is making them interest in your offer. Newsflash, you do have an offer when recruiting new talent. Okay. You are offering people something. If you go ahead and you basically employ people and pay them exactly what they're worth. So they don't feel like they get, they feel like they get a one-to-one -one return when they walk home right? That's not a good deal. It's not a good deal for them. And it's not a good deal for you because then you'll probably not expect them to do the best of their efforts when they're out servicing your customers. Okay. So have you ever wondered why it's hard for companies to find staff? We're 9 billion people on the earth. Don't tell me that there isn't enough who can do what you need, who can do what you need done. Okay. Chances are you're probably just not interesting enough to work for. What's the benefit? Why should they work for you versus the competitor? OK, this answering this question will actually tell you a lot about your business. It will give you a lot of insight. If you look at it with critical eyes, it will give you a lot of insights that you can use to improve elsewhere in your company. So I recommend that maybe write this down. Try to answer it. Um, what makes them stay at your company? So how do you retain them at your company? Right. You need to keep giving also to your employees for them to find it attractive to be at your company and to stay at your company. They must feel like they're in a winning scenario, not like they're just being compensated exactly what they're worth. Okay. They've got to feel, whoa, these guys actually really care about me. Okay. So educating talent. First of all, this never stops. It's not a phase that you go through and then it's finished. Okay. You keep educating your talent. But when you're acquiring someone, when you're acquiring talent, it's extremely important that they are educated on what it is that you do. OK, otherwise they won't know if it's a fit for them and you won't know that they actually took the time to understand 
uh, what it is that, that you would bring into the marketplace, okay? So talent is the most crucial part of your business. Without talent, you're just spinning your own wheel uh, in a self-created nine-to-nine job, okay? That's a bad deal. I'm sure that a lot of people viewing this probably know the feeling of being a one-man job. You, you quit whatever it is that you were doing before to start your own business. And now what happened is you're making a bit more money, right? Because there's no, there's no limit to how much you can make. But now you also have a lot of stress because you have 10 different hats on at once. Okay. That's how most businesses start. And it's completely fine. But the way you get out of this is actually by finding people who believe in your vision and is able to help you take care of some of these hats for you. Okay. So you need people around you, just like I said, who believe your vision and want to get your customers the best experience possible. A way to make sure people sp- uh, you speak with are your people, you need to align their beliefs with yours. One way to do this is with, with, a, with a video sales letter. So this is what is often referred to as a VSL. You might have heard that before, video sales letter. Um, it can also be used for education. It's essentially a sales letter recorded because it has more depth. This, for instance, uh, like you're looking at right now, that is actually a v- video sales letter. It would go in under the same category because... I'm speaking to you in between the lines so you get more depth and detail on what it is that we're talking about. You also get to see who the person behind the screen is, which makes more of a connection with uh, the person consuming it, you behind the camera. Okay, so what is a VSL? This is an example. This is just a screenshot from one of our own funnels. So here it says, watch this to confirm your call. And then I basically walk through step by step what um, <clears throat> the roadmap of the process that we use, this is for our job acquisition system. So it, it tells um, the person who signed up and want to speak with us, it gives them a lot of insight into what it is they can basically expect from the call, why they should attend. Um, it also tells them if they are qualified or not. You'll see we don't have a book with us or pay us or do anything called. We actually have a cancellation uh, call to action. Right. We actually have a big fat button that tells people, if this is not you, don't speak with us. Don't take the time. Go do something else. It's completely fine because it saves us time and it saves you time. That is a VSL. Okay. We want to educate people before we speak with them. So we use VSLs to pre-educate people who we're looking to talk to. This goes for recruiting talent as well as for sales. Your VSL should do the following. First of all, it should sell yourself and your company. Talent won't pay attention to you or your business if you cannot give them an idea of what you've done with your other staff. If you don't have any staff, speak about yourself, speak about their potential opportunities in the future, speak about their situation now and where they could be if they came working for you, okay? How many jobs can they expect, right? What kind of hours? Do they have any benefits? Maybe you have a certain way of paying them. Maybe they have a base plus a good commission with no limit to how much they can make. Maybe they have a, maybe you have a customer satisfaction program where they get a chance to earn a bit more credit because they are doing an extra good job with the customers. Whatever it might be, it really depends on your business and what your unique selling point is with what it is that you do. So speak to their current situation. Why are they looking for a new job? What's the problem with where they came from or, you know, quote unquote, the old way they used to make a living? So where are they coming from and why is that no longer working for them? Let them know that there is a better way and you are here to help them find that. So you are here to actually help your potential future employee make a better life for him or herself. Okay, you understand that pain and you are here to help them. Introduce the process, a model, whatever it is that you want to call it. This ideally is something that is unique. It's a unique mechanism to your business. It's a unique way of doing things because that automatically separates you from everyone else in the marketplace, okay? So how is working for you going to give them better opportunities than what they currently have? Maybe they have unlimited upsides in terms of commissions or maybe uh, they get training on how to complete their work more efficiently to save time without reducing the quality of service. So it can be education, it can be they are able to make more money, it can be they are around good people. Ideally, you want people to work for you because they want to be a part of your team, because they look up to the other people on your team. But that takes a long time to build, right? So in the beginning, you will probably not be able to do that, okay? This is where something like employee branding comes in. So if you already have a lot of staff, begin doing that. It will automatically help you attract much better talent. 
uh, or maybe maybe they get an opportunity to go from uh, from a tech. You know, if you're hiring a tech person, from tech to team lead in your business after completing X amount of jobs out of, after being with you for X amount of time or what, however you choose to build it out. Okay. Then you want to give them a call to action. What is the, what is the thing they have to do now? Do they have to book a call with you? Do they have to fill out the form? Do they have to take a personality test? Do they have to send in their resume? Like whatever it is, I recommend, <laughs> by the way, a note on resumes. It won't tell you shit. Okay. I'm very sorry. It won't. Don't it, it Spend your time, if you are going to have them send something, have them send a video where they speak about their experience. So that would be the closest that you can get to a resume. Don't make them send in a paper. It won't really tell you much about the person. It will tell you if they're good at writing or not, okay? Or good at using chat GPT or not. So talent acquisition is exactly like custom acquisition, except you have much more risk in bringing on bad talent than you do a bad customer. So with bad talent, that can lose you a lot of customers. A bad customer will only lose you one customer and then you just fire the customer, okay? So then we have converting talent. So again, like I said, it's like a sales funnel. So just think of it like a sales funnel with more education. You still have, a, have an offer. You still have call to actions. You still have a market call out. You still have the educational phase, the VSL. You need to set the appointment. You need to attend the interview. And I recommend that you have a candidate database. So if you're speaking with a lot of people, maybe you are speaking with someone who's actually a, a you know, their fighter, their go-to person, right? They, they are someone who you would want to work with if you had the role for them or at another time, or if you could pay them or whatever, save these people. Everyone you speak with should be in a database. You should have a database of people you've spoken with, with notes on what you spoke about, notes on their experience, what their personal goals are and how you can help them achieve that by them being in your company, okay? This is very important because once you've gone this th through this process a couple of times, you will have a lot of candidates that you can basically reach out to and go like, hey, Martin, what's up? How's it going? Blah, 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 right? Now this now Martin is already pre-vetted, right? He already knows about you. You just speak to him again, see if he's a good fit still, okay? Very important. This is the kind of thing that you don't want to spend time on up front, but once you need them, you're regretting that you didn't do it. Okay. So take my word for it, build a candidate database. You can use something like uh, a table for that, for instance, or you can use Google Sheets or whatever. I recommend just having a database. So retaining talent, align your incentives. When they win, the company wins. When the company wins, they win. Okay. So you want to have the incentives of you and the staff member as closely related as possible. You want to make sure that both of you win at the same time, okay? Same thing goes for compensation. If they have a significant part of their pay tied to commission, a good trick is to actually pay them as quickly as possible. Sometimes that means every day. It's a lot of administrative work, but it's important in the beginning, right? Then after that, you stretch it out to weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, however it is that you make the agreement with them. This will help you a lot with retention, okay? It's education and it's gamification. So this could be they can level up, meaning positions. It could be they get access to new tools. And of course, they should always have the tools that they need, but you know, maybe they want new equipment or better equipment, more expensive equipment, whatever it is. You build them a roadmap. Hey, here is how you're going to evolve if you stay at my company, okay? Here is what's in it for you. Uh, lastly, pay well, charge premium prices and pay your team well. It's easy to say and hard to do, especially this part, especially if you're just going around knocking doors and handing out flyers, which I know a lot of you are doing, okay? It's easy to say hard to do, but good stuff is worth 2x the pay. Great stuff is worth 10x the pay, okay? So although you might be paying 20% more to someone to really get an A player, that person might return you 10x if they're really, really, really good. Okay, I know this is super, super, it's very superficial. It depends on the role, everything, but compensate your team well. These are the people that are going to have your back when you can't have it. Okay, if you pay them shit, they're not going to have your back. It's very unlikely. The problem is most business owners just look at the snapshot PL and average salaries to determine how to pay their talent. But guess what? If you take the same action as everyone else in your industry, would you expect to get outsized returns? Probably not. So don't do it like everybody else, okay? 
here is a bit the um, a talent acquisition roadmap. I've made it very simple, so it's easy for you to understand. Um, let's say you build it exactly like a sales funnel, then it could look like this. Talent acquisition infrastructure, you do lead generation. That could be meta ads. It could be anything else. This is just what I've written. It's how we do it here. You have a creative, you have targeting, you have the lead form that they fill out some pre-qualifying questions. That sends them to an educational um, phase, the educational mechanism, okay? You have the sales angle. What's in it for them? Why should they watch this? What do they get out of it? Then they have the actual education, the VSL. That leads them to a calendar where they can book in an appointment with you or your team who's going to interview it, uh, you them, uh, whoever they need to speak with. And then you have the actual start of the interview process. I know that some people, they also have a, like a dedicated conversion mechanism to this. This is actually a conversion mechanism. If it's really hard for you to get the talent to actually book with you and speak with you, you can add in this as well, right? I personally like having friction. I want it to be difficult for people to, uh, to come in and speak with us and work with us because then I know that they are super dedicated. The way we're recruiting triages, appointment setters, for instance, is I literally put out a, a notice that we are looking for someone. And then I look at who will not stop bugging me. Okay, who has the best follow-up game? And then I, then I speak with those. That, that's how I do it personally. It might not be the best way, but it works for us. Okay, uh, if you're going to have the conversion mechanism, you want to connect it with your CM. If you don't have one, use a Google Sheet. You have a sequence with email and SMS to get them on an appointment, assuming that they are actually uh, qualified, right? Which you will get from the lead form and from the opt-in on the VSL. And then you speak with them from there. After that, everything has to do with um, uh, the legal work of it. You want to make sure you have a contract. You want to make sure that um, you place them in the right way. So is it going to be a contract or is it just going to, oh, it, not just, is it going to be a contract or is it going to be an employee? What's the difference between them two? How does the contract look? All of that stuff. Okay. So call to action. If you're a lo local service business looking to hire better staff and get better customers, click the link in the description. We'll speak. You can see if it's something for you. All right. So with that said, I wish you a, uh, a beautiful day and um, yeah, see you soon. Bye.